Rockwell Automation's Stratix 4300 switches come with several configuration options for Ethernet ports, wireless, and cellular connections. In this video, we will set up the configuration needed for remote access on the Stratix 4300 using the wireless connection. The Stratix 4300 we will be using in this demonstration has five ethernet ports plus wireless and cellular option capabilities. The first thing we need to do is set up the hardware so that we can establish a remote access connection. This is done through the web interface of the Stratix 4300 remote access switch. The switch has a default IP address username and password, which are all written on the nameplate information tag on the side of the unit. The default IP is 192.168.0.1, and that address can be changed from within the web interface. Also, when you log in for the first time, it will ask you to change the password so that it is no longer the default password. After we update the password and IP address, we will need to reboot the device and connect to the new IP. In our demo, we will have already changed the IP address of the switch to 192.168.143. So we will log in and show the rest of the configuration pages. We will log in to see general, interfaces, networking, remote access, users, and diagnostics. On the general tab, I like to enable the WAN web server so that later on I can access the equipment within the facility and still get to the configuration interface of the hardware. The IP was changed using the interfaces tab where we left WAN set to DHCP, but if you do not have a persistent reservation based on MAC address, you can statically assign a WAN address so that your remote access connection will not need to be updated every time the equipment is power cycled. You can add multiple LAN addresses, but it would not be advised to leave multiple since that would create some potential network issues. Just the same as having a PC with multiple addresses assigned to the same network interface card. The networking page is where we would need to enable internet sharing, NAT, and routing rules for the network we are connected to. The server connection is where we will always check the status of the cloud server. Once connected to Remote Access Manager, the connection can also be monitored in the Factory Talk Hub location. The server connection on the 4300 is also configurable to use a digital input, which means you can have something physical at the equipment such as a button, selector switch, or even a PLC output to enable the remote server connection. There is a terminal block on top of the unit that can be wired for this configuration option. The last two pages are straightforward where you can view and add users as well as perform network diagnostics such as ping. Once you have the unit set up, you can look at the LED indicators to confirm the unit is ready. There are multiple lights on the front of the unit. Depending on the specific model, these lights may also change. Our demo unit has all possible options, which means we have five ethernet ports, which consist of four LAN ports and one WAN port, and we also have wireless and cellular options. You can mix and match these configurations along with two power ethernet options. The first LED on the front of the unit is a restart light. This light will let you know configuration changes require a reboot. There is also a server and USB light, a power light, remote connection light, Wi-Fi light, 3G, 4G light, and lastly, there are serial communication lights. When powering up for the first time, the server light will be flashing, meaning it has not been fully configured. After you configure, that light will turn solid green. Then we will use the local connection to verify the remote connection light turns solid green. Doing this step will make it easier for the remote access manager to find our hardware. If you are not able to establish a local connection, then you may not have enabled the local connection. This checkbox can be found in the remote access page on the web interface. Once the hardware is set up, we need to move to remote access manager. Within the manager, we will select add device, then select add device locally. 
If you select Add Device Locally and a new screen asking for credentials does not show up, then you need to make sure that you have remote access tools installed. Those can be found under the Tools, then Download section in the Remote Access Manager. When the new window appears, we will need to enter the user and password that we changed during the setup process. Once you log in, you will be taken to a new page where you will wait for the MAC address of the WAN, Wi-Fi, and Cellular to appear. Once the MAC address is shown in the window, you will select the MAC and then type in a name. This will turn the register button blue and will add the 4300 under the domain view of your current remote access organization. Once the device appears, it will have a green icon next to it indicating it has an active WAN connection and is visible to Remote Access Manager. If the icon moves from green to gray, that means Remote Access Manager can no longer see the hardware. If you select VPN and you have both LAN and WAN enabled, you will now get assigned an IP address in the private network. This is visible in the VPN screen where you get connections, device information, and logs. The VPN tool looks identical to the local connection tool and functions the same also. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please reach out to your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.